in turmoil. What are we going to do? Well, calm down. You're just overreacting again. Well, can you blame me? There's floods and forest fires, earthquakes, tsunamis, tornadoes, and it's only getting worse. How do we prepare for these events? I told you we should have built that bunker. Well, I know a way we can prepare, and that is by preserving all of our meat. Good idea. If there's a massive power outage, all our freezers are goners. Good thinking. Thank you, Madame Chair's person. Good afternoon, honorable judges. Friends. Families. And fellow 4-H members. My name is Chelsea Simmons. And my name is David Simmons. And today, we will be preparing you for natural disasters by demonstrating how to make... The Ride for Your Bunker! First, let's start by gathering all of our materials. We'll need to brine and smoke our meat. First, a knife to cut and slice the meat. Next, we'll need a plate to cut the meat on and to use as a weight when submerging your meat in the brine solution. A glass dish to use when mixing your brine solution in. Remember to use glass instead of other materials like plastic or wood so none of the brine absorb into the material. Next, saran wrap. You'll need saran wrap for fully surrounding your brine solution when placing in the fridge, so no other odors permeate into the meat. A smoker. Today we will be using an electric smoker, but you can also use a propane smoker or a charcoal smoker. Smoking trays. You'll need smoking trays for resting your meat on while in the smoker. A drip pan. To place in the smoker while you're smoking your meat, so any of the excess brine drips and falls off the meat into the drip pan. Wood chips. You'll need wood chips for smoking your meat. Some great options are hickory, oak, mesquite, cherry, and apple wood tip chips. But today, we'll be using apple and maple wood chips. Oven mitts. When removing your smoking trays from the smoker, the smoker will be reaching extremely hot temperatures. So to prevent your hands from getting burnt or injured, you'll want to use oven mitts. Meat thermometer. You'll need a meat thermometer for checking the correct temperature of the meat, making sure that it is fully cooked. And lastly, measuring cups and spoons. To measure out all the ingredients we'll be using in our brine solution. So David, what are our ingredients? Our ingredients are one pound beef steak, two tablespoons salt, two cups water, two tablespoons sugar, and one tablespoon thyme. Time to get brining. <laughs> First, let's start by choose your meat. Generally, you want to choose a meat that is thicker than one inch. Otherwise, it can get over salted or too dry. Next, mix the brine. Start by adding in your two cups water into your glass dish. Just like that. Your two tablespoons of salt. Your two tablespoons of sugar. And your one tablespoon of thyme. Next, submerge your meat. Make sure you use rubber gloves as food safe properties. Then, fully submerge your meat in the brine solution. As so. If your meat floats to the top, you can weigh it down with the plate or any other object you can find in your kitchen, such as like another plate or like a cup. <coughs> Perfect. Next, you're going to want to refrigerate your meat. Remember at this step to use the saran wrap so none of those nasty odors from your fridge get into the meat. Make sure you cover all the edges as it seals nice and tightly. Once your meat has been then removed from brine, once your meat has finished brining, remove it from the meat and cook it as desired. Today, we will be smoking our meat. Hey David. Yeah? Why are steak jokes so rare? Why? Because they're never well done. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we will be doing hot smoking. Hot smoking is where your meat is placed in temperatures that slowly cook it from 100 to 120 degrees Celsius as well as with the wood chips, burning their flavor into the meat, cooking, tenderizing, and preserving it. Smoking meat goes back all the way to the old days. It involves the process of the smoke chemicals killing the microbes and breaking down the fatty acids. There's many different ways in which people used to smoke their meat. They could dry it in the sun, heavily salt it, or smoke it over a fire. These were the main ways in which indigenous people were able to preserve their foods for long periods of time. They would then store it in cool, dry places like root cellars. Now, onto smoking our meat. First, prepare your meat. We have pre-prepared our meat in the brine solution. Next, preheat your smoker. Depending on your recipe, you'll want to preheat your smoker to the desired temperature. Our recipe says to preheat to 120 degrees Celsius. Next, 
Add in your wood chips. With all other smokers, we'll have a wood chip tray. This is where you'll place in your wood chips. And then it goes right in the back. As a reminder, some great options are hickory, oak, mesquite, cherry, and apple wood chips. But today, we'll be using the apple wood chips. Next, place your meat in the smoker. For demonstration purposes, we have pre-brined some meat in advance of this demonstration. Place your meat on the smoking trays. When placing your meat in the tray, you're going to want to spread it out evenly so it doesn't get stuck together with the other meat. While it is smoking, it gets kind of sticky, so you'll want to make sure you spread it out. Remember to keep it away from the edges so none of the meat gets over dried or burnt. Next, monitor your temperature. With all electric smokers, you'll have a digital temperature gauge. This is where you'll monitor your temperature, ensuring that your meat does not get burnt, overcooked, or too dry. Next, add in more wood chips. Every 30 minutes or until the wood chips burn out, you're going to want to add in more to keep the smoke going and keep the flavor enhanced. Mmm. Perfect. Then, you're going to check for doneness. Make sure you always use your oven mitts when removing the trays because the smoker reaches a very hot temperatures. Then, once the meat has come out, it should be crispy. Then, you will take your meat thermometer, take a nice big piece of meat, poke the meat thermometer right into the meat. When it's fully cooked, it should reach 65 to 95 degrees Celsius when fully done. Lastly, you're going to want to rest your meat. Once you've determined your meat has re the, reached the correct temperature and is safe to consume, you're going to want to rest it for 10 to 15 minutes before serving and enjoying. You'll know if your meat has been adequately smoked when it turns dark brown in color. When you touch it, it should be tender and spring back to its original shape. Mmm, this meat smells so delicious. Being a vegetarian must be a big miss. Steak! <laughs> Sorry if my sister's joke was a little insulting. Smoking meat has dated back hundreds of years. And you still might be wondering, why we choose to smoke our meat? Those reasons are... To add a smoky flavor. To make the meat more tender. To kill the bacteria. To make the meat last longer. And to store without refrigeration. Now, let's recap on the materials we used to smoke and brine our meat today. The materials we used, which are... A knife. A plate. A glass dish. Saran wrap. A smoker. Smoking trays. Drip pan. Wood chips. Some more materials. Oven mitts. Meat thermometer. And lastly, measuring cups and spoons, which helped us measure out all of our ingredients, which are... Which were, our ingredients were, one pound beef steak. Two cups water. Salt. Two tablespoons sugar. And one tablespoon thyme. We brought it all together with our brining steps. Which were, choose your meat. Mix the brine. Submerge your meat. Refrigerate. And remove from brine solution. And lastly, all of our smoking steps, which include... Prepare your meat. Preheat the smoker. Add in wood chips. Place meat in smoker. Monitor your temperature. Add more wood chips. Check for doneness. And lastly, rest your meat. So when it seems like natural disasters are taking over, or you just want some delicious jerky, make some... Brine, brine for your bunker! bunker. Are there any questions? Yes. What's the best way to store your jerky after it's The question that has been asked is what is the best way to store your jerky after you have smoked it? It depends on the purpose of the jerky. So if you're just wanting it for a snack, you can store it up in your fridge for up to three weeks. Uh, if you want to keep it for long periods of time, you can store it in a cool, dry place or a freezer where it can last up to a year. Does that answer your question? Yes. In the back. How long do you leave it in the brine solution? Uh, the question that has been asked is how long do you leave it in the brine solution? 
With our one pound of meat, we'll leave it in the brine solution for one hour. So if it'll be two pounds, we'll leave it in the brine for two hours. So whatever the poundage of meat, um, then you'll leave it in the same time, so like one for one hour. Does that answer your question? Yes. Is the procedure any different for different types of meat, like lamb or venison, as opposed to beef? The question that has been asked, is the procedure any different for other types of meat? Uh, we have found that the procedure is the same, although you can experiment with different spices, uh, different sauces. Sometimes you can even add like a soya sauce into the brine instead of as much water. Uh, if you're smoking fish, for example, like salmon, um, you're going to want to use kind of like a maple bacon almost feel and, uh, to get like a candied salmon, depending on, depending on what kind of meat you're smoking. You can also change up the different types of wood chips, like David mentioned, to get a different um, like smoky flavor into it. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Are there any further questions? Are there any further questions? Are there any further questions? If there are no further questions, this concludes our demonstration on how to make brine for your bunker. bunker.